Now we will move uh, to the second part, to the second topic, which is about medical data. Medical data is something so beautiful. And when we begin to think how medical data actually looks like, I think I can surprise you a bit. So because we speak about medical data, you see everything becomes green. Uh, there are three revolutions in the field of medical data that each one by itself is huge. And of course, when they are all together, it's even uh, the effect is even greater. The first revolution, and you've heard a lot about it, it's the revolution of bioinformatics, of course, and the cost of sequencing. From the uh, molecular ability to go into the cell, into the nucleus of the cell, and read the DNA sequence with using various uh, methods, and to, through the algorithms from the field of bioinformatics, how fast everything today, how cheap everything today. <laughs> That's definitely a situation where there's abundance of a lot of genomic data. So that's the first revolution, a very important revolution. But more or less in the same time of that revolution, we have the second revolution. And it's the revolution of electronic medical records, in short, EMR. And it's hard to put a finger on when this revolution happened. And it's not a sporadic event, of course, it's a continuum. But if we need to, I would say it's uh, February 17, uh, 2009, when President Obama, uh, in his budget, in his first budget when he uh, um, entered into office, to office, uh, when he gave so much money, people don't know, you know, they know heard about Obamacare and Medicaid and Medicare and so on, all the things that he did in medicine, but actually. If you look at the numbers, the second chapter, money-wise, in, in number of dollars, is electronic medical records. Mm -hmm. He wanted to revolutionize, and he did that, the, to revolutionize with federal money the state of uh, transform, transforming Manila papers into really good electronic medical records. And that again, that revolution again created abundance of a lot of medical data. We don't look today even at 1% of it, even much less than 1%. And there's a gold, I think everybody agrees, it's, it's a gold mine. And there's a lot of potential of smart algorithm, data mining algorithms, machine learning algorithms, AI algorithms, to read that data, to infer from that gold mine many new um, medical insights, some of which maybe we even have never hypothesized about. Good that we have an hypothesis engine, right? So even new discoveries it's not that the computer answers our question. Maybe the computer can give the questions as well. So that's the second revolution. And then more or less at the same time, we have the third revolution. And that's the, let's call it the digital revolution. That's the revolution of the web, of social networks, of mobile phones, of wearables, like the nice watch that I uh, wear here. Today, People talk about medical stuff online. They look for medical advice online. They measure many aspects of their lives with their smartphones and wearables. And that's a different kind of information. So what people talk about in Twitter when they speak about their medical state it's, you cannot compare it to a controlled clinical trial, right? But still, this information gives us another angle that we want to explore. And we will show that scientists were able to detect outbreaks of flu and other kind of epidemi ep ep epidemics two weeks, on average, two weeks before ofi health officials did just by reviewing tweets from Twitter using AI. We were on ourselves, or 
put in our pockets computers that are so strong today they are you know much stronger just with the uh, desktop computer that we used five or ten years ago and these tools measure different signals 24 7 not when we are or when patients are in a control environment of a clinical trial just with a few hundreds or a few thousands of patients but millions of people 24 7 that's a different kind of information that's a different kind of data and we want to harness it and to make good use of it so that's the third revolution and again these three revolutions more or less happened at the same time and then the effect is even much greater. So let's talk, begin talking about the medical data per se. Okay? And there are different kinds of medical data. One of the uh, popular ones is, of course, image data. Image is so imaging is so important in, in, in medicine, okay? when we can see organs or failures. So image data is, of course, very important. So it used to be like x-rays, and people were looking at the x-rays like this. Today, there's much better technology, CT, MRI, uh, which what they do, they give us not just one slice of the body, but uh, many, many different slices of the uh, human body. And then, using algorithms, we can take all these two-dimensional pictures, combine them together, and with computer modeling, create some kind of a spatial model, of a spatial model, some kind of a three-dimensional model. So we can understand, really, uh, how all the organs and everything is arranged. And uh, I will show you now an example, a very nice example, uh, of something that is called an autopsy table where they give us this three dimension modeling and also some ways to interact with it. So this is, for example, in this case, a body, OK? That was put in city. Um, and it's a three dimensional model that we can interact it. We can, as you can see here, cut it in the middle. Probably you've seen software like this. We can peel off different uh, uh, um, parts of the body, different tissues, whatnot. Uh, and they used, in this case, it was very nice. They used it for um, uh, forensics. So here is the victim. You can see uh, he or she is covered with a blanket, <laughs> like in the real uh, cases. Uh, so we can put away. And now we can uh, begin to investigate it from uh, muscles to bones uh, and everything. Uh, so they show that they were able to solve uh, that group and that uh, person I, I showed earlier. They show that they can solve uh, very big uh, mysteries with this um, spatial simulation. Okay, so you can really see the body in different angles and in different ways, but I think what is more uh, nice about here, as, as you can see here, uh, it's like in a big, let's call it a tablet, okay? So you can touch, <laughs> okay? Uh, actually, um, hmm, you don't, although when you touch a body you need the gloves, so here you don't need the gloves. I don't know, I don't know why it took it. Uh, but really you can interact it with it and it's magnificent. It's just a very, very elegant uh, application. I would like to show you that um, in video. This is a short presentation video of the Virtual Autopsy Table, an interactive installation based on cutting-edge research within medical visualization. In this installation, with the help of an easy-to-use multi-touch surface, the user can interact with stunning volumetric 3D data sets of real scanned bodies. The user can remove certain layers of the body, 
This makes it possible to look inside the volume and focus on specific details, such as the brain, the skeleton, the heart, or the skin. To make it possible to look at specific details, the user can cut through the body with a virtual knife. The data sets have been created with state-of-the-art techniques within medical visualisation, such as dual energy computed tomography, and by using new methods in the field of magnetic resonance imaging. Okay, uh, cool, right? Very nice. So you see that uh, data can be more than just uh, Excel sheets or DNA sequences. It can be, we can look at it, so that's very nice. And we show that we can touch it, okay? So one way to touch the data was what you've seen just now with this uh, touch pad, okay? But there's another tool and this is what I'm showing here. It's some kind of uh, F pen, okay? A virtual pen. And you can see that here the guy is holding that pen that is, of course, connected to the computer. And that pen gives some kind of haptic feedback. So he can take the pen and with this pen and with three dimensional glasses, uh, just look around and, and go into the body and, you know, penetrate the skeleton or penetrate other organs and you know go into the brain and 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 really touch the thing this is how it looks like it's like a three-dimensional setting this is the pen you can go it, it gives you like a very very um, authentic experience not if with just what you see but also with what you feel in the, in the hand with this haptic feedback so you can actually travel through the body go and see the veins and touch the arteries and whatnot and really feel whatever it's like you put your hand <laughs> in some way you put your hand in the inside of the body so data, we don't only visualize the data, we can also touch the data. <coughs> and the next phase, if we talk about touching the data, is also doing that on, not only in virtual, but also in real. So there's the field of robotic surgery, where the patient can be in one place and the surgeon can be in another place of, in the world. And uh, like here it's in the same room, but you can understand that with the internet, of course, it can be somewhere else. And the uh, actions uh, will be performed by the robot. Now, let me ask you this. You are all physicians. Uh, what are the advantages that you can see here in this kind of setting? So yeah, one of the one. So this is one things that we said that of course the surgeon can be let's say in America, the surgeon and the uh, patient can be in um, Africa. I said microsurgeries, more, more. Microsurgeries. This is absolutely right. So we can change the scale. So we can like zoom in, okay, and make ourselves like 100% uh, times smaller. So as sur surgeon, we can do micro actions and we can take a, a vein from here and connect it and, and do things in a different scale. It's a fantasy, but we can do that with robotic surgery. Okay, another, this is a very important, another Hygiene. advantage, what? Hygiene. Hygiene, very, very true, very, very true. What else? Faster. Say, faster, why faster? Uh, in this case, I'm not talking about a robot that does it itself with an AI or something, but just, you know, the communication that enables you to be in one, in one place and see the data and touch the data and even manipulate the data.
or the actual body in another place. Accuracy, Accuracy that's right, because we have our, you know, uh, inherent um, 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 trouble, yeah, and today algorithms can uh, clean that, that's true. What else? They can see down. And they can see down, that's true. So you can <laughs> do a surgery sitting down, that's a very big advantage. Okay. Now, let's look at the second uh, leg, which is the data mining.